Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Cinnamon desktop environment. Now, I recently installed uh, the Debian uh, Linux distribution, and it um, one of the desktops you can install is Cinnamon. Uh, if you use Linux Mint, you'll also be uh, familiar with uh, Cinnamon. So the Cinnamon desktop will be instantly familiar to anyone who's used Windows in the last 20 years. Uh, you've got a main panel at the bottom, you've got a desktop, you've got this menu icon and it brings up this really nice stylish menu uh, with categories down here. You can search for an application such as Google Chrome or you can just filter through the um, categories and choose the application you want. You have um, further settings down the left because I've got some favourites so if I wanted to I could add that to the panel, add items to the d um, desktop or I can add it to favourites. So now you can see mines is on the favourites list there. So um, adding things to the desktop is easy if I wanted mines on the desktop I'll right click and I can do add to desktop and I've got a desktop icon. So it's very, um, will be instantly familiar if you use Windows at all. You can add desktop icons. You've got your panels, you've got quick launch icons down here. These are um, applications you run, and this is one that's running already. So um, I can close that. Uh, this is my screen recorder, which I'm using for the video. Uh, but these are default applications that are there. So say you wanted a web browser to be instantly available you can add it to the panel and then it's there so I can click that and open my web browser. That's the first time I use the web browser so make it default and everything works as normal. In the bottom right corner we have the system tray so um, we've got clock down here, we've got audio settings, network, um, if you've got printer but all your basic system settings are here and you can right click um, so you can find more about the calendar and configure it. Uh, you can do stuff with the sound, or you can left click and then it will have uh, different settings. So for the sound, you choose sound set. For the sound, you can have sound settings. You can launch a player, such as rhythm box. On the panels, you can add a new panel if you want. There's no reason you just have to have one panel. So. Select the position of the new panel, you can have it on the top, you can have it at the right, have it at the left. So I'm going to put one on the top. And you can add things to the panel. Uh, so you can click on applets. And you can choose what appears on that, that applet. So um, I could have, for instance, a I could for instance have accessibility options. I can have keyboard layout options. I can have the power manager. Although because if they've got a tick next to them they won't allow you to for some reason then add it to another panel. So I could have recent documents. You could have settings so you can see the, the settings of uh, cinnamon, a workspace switcher and then a quick window list as well. So as you can see um, I've got a new panel and I can have panel med edit mode on or off. So if I've got it on, I can move it like that. I can remove it entirely. So you can add and remove things from panels and you can have multiple panels. And uh, so I could move this panel to the top. Let's uh, see what panel settings you're going to add. So uh, panel height for instance, you can make it smaller. You can choose whether to auto hide the panel, or intelligently hide the panel or show the panel. You can change the font size. You can switch between panels by clicking the next and previous panel option. And that's that. So let's remove this panel. I don't want it. And so if you move it to the top, everything just drags down rather than um, um, scroll upwards. So I'm going to move it back to its default position. You can um, change the desktop background, you can create launchers. 
we can create new folders, create new documents. Uh, these are some of the things. You can add desklets. So if I click add desklets, so um, for instance I can add a clock. And then you can move that to where you want it to be. I can add a digital photo frame. And then you can configure that. And you choose the folder. So in this case I could use pictures. And you can have it shuffle. So it will change the picture every few seconds. You can change the height and size of it as well, and you can add special effects. You can make them sepia. Or black and white. Sepia doesn't really seem to work very well, but uh, we can have none. And you have a desklet that launches a program. So uh, you can edit launcher and then you can type in the name of the application. Now in reality, uh, unless you're running your own scripts, you're easier to actually find the application. For instance, GIMP, right click and then add to desktop and that will create the launch for you. So. Um, You can download more desklets, uh, so you have to update your cache. And these are the things you can add. So you can add a uh, Google Calendar, displays disk usage. So line these things up how you want them to be. So clock there, disk usage like that. Uh, weather desklet. So I can configure that. And it chooses the PPC. Uh, location I'm hoping that allow you just to put in a place. It doesn't. You can choose the data service as well. There's all these different data services. And you can choose um, what it displays as part of the desklet. So all these desklets are available. You can add notes, system monitor, for those people that want to see how well the system is doing. For people who want to check the finances, there's Yahoo Finance, Quotes, Developer Tools, and you can decorate the desklets as shown in this tab here. So the system settings, these are the same ones you get with GNOME. Um, so backgrounds allows you to choose your background folder. Um, so these are default ones and you can add in your own ones by clicking this plus symbol and then finding the folder. Effects, um, you can choose whether to have effects on uh, windows and menus. Um, if your system is um, struggling, then you might want to turn off some of the effects to, to save memory. And, and you can see there's effects style, so I've got uh, cinnamon, but it could be any of these other ones. Uh, font selection, themes. So these are the themes at the moment, but you can do add, remove again update your cache and it's going to give you a number of different themes to choose from so let's go for this windows 10 light theme 
Second change winter's folder. Controls, it's 10. Mouse pointer, doesn't give one. Desktop, you can go Windows 10. Icons, I was expecting to see Windows 10, not seeing them. But let's have a look. And as you can see, that's what ends up with a horrible mess of a system. Then you've got accessibility options, keyboard settings, enable keyboard, on, on screen keyboard, typing assistance, mouse, etc. Account details, um, this is more for your user account, etc., for logging in, uh, date and time. Uh, for setting your um, clock, uh, desk clips we've seen, desktop we've seen, extensions again, cache is out of date. Let's see what extensions there are. Uh, so, wobbly windows, sliders, window effects, etc. Hot corners is good, this enables you to determine what happens with hot corners. So, at the moment, my corners are doing nothing, but I can enable this corner and I can choose to do what I want with it. So I can show all the workspaces, show all the windows, show the desktop. So if I choose that, for instance, now when I go up there, I can choose to move to different workspaces and indeed add another one in. And you can enable any one of the four corners uh, to tell me what to do with notifications, online accounts, Cinnamon is built on top of GNOME, which is why you're seeing GNOME settings. And you can use it for mail, calendar, doc, contact, documents, photos, files, etc. What it means is that if I've got a Google Drive set up, I can now go to my drive. And you can see it's loading all the files from my Google Drive for everyday Linux user. And obviously for email clients like Thunderbird, it will pull in my emails. Down here you've got your hardware settings, so that actually do your sound, do your printers, etc. And then you've got administration. Uh, there are keyboard shortcuts with Cinnamon. Um, and I found this website here, cheatography.com, and it's got this cheat sheets, Linux Mint Cinnamon, uh, worth looking at. Um, and you can see these are the keys you can use. So. Um, Super and S. It shows the desklets. So even though I've got my application open, I can see my desklets. Um, Alt F2. And I can run a command. Uh, so these are all worth uh, learning, or you can print this out and have it on your wall, uh, or you know you can use it to learn a workflow so that you can work more quickly. Now, as you can see it says download the Linux Mint keyboard shortcuts as a PDF and then you can print it out. So this is a really good resource. Cheatography.com shaky st nerd forward slash cheat hyphen sheets forward slash Linux hyphen mint hyphen cinnamon and that's um, for that. So to summarize cinnamon is a familiar looking desktop for most people who come from Windows it's got uh, all the things you'd expect. You can add things to panels, you can add uh, applets, you can add desklets as I've shown. Um, you can add items to favorites to the panel, to the desktop, um, and you can use different workspaces and you can use keyboard shortcuts to switch between those workspaces. So all in all, uh, Cinnamon is a great uh, desktop environment and uh, is one of my preferred options. And that is the end of the review. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.